Hey everybody, Travis from Rogue Elephant LLC. I know it's been a while since the last time we did a video. Um, we have a lot of cool videos in the works, but today I wanted to cover one that was kind of something that we had to deal with recently with a client video. Um, it's that time of year where weddings are a big deal. And I say that like weddings aren't a big deal to be any time of year. Um, but there's weddings, it's the wedding season, essentially is what it is. And so lately we've been doing a lot of uh, wedding recording for clients. And that means we use multiple cameras, we have different audio inputs, stuff like that. And one problem that I consistently run into is that, you know, when you have different types of cameras, different angles, you have different amounts of lights coming into the lenses, uh, you end up with different looking footage. Sometimes it's really grainy, sometimes it's really bright, sometimes it's really dark. It really varies a lot depending on the camera. And with weddings, depending on how everything's set up, you don't always necessarily have the time to make the appropriate adjustments that you need to make. So uh, I'm going to go over a video project that I just finished editing recently and we're going to I'm going to show you what the problem was with the footage to begin with and then show you what our solution was for the footage. Um, so if we go ahead and we take a look at the footage, you can see that the footage itself is a kind of a very yellow, uh, grainy yellow type footage. Um, to put it in a not so nice way, it basically looks like somebody peed all over the film. Um, and we don't even use film, we use digital media now. Um, so it, it just, it's very yellow, it doesn't show the colors very well at all. Um, but if we look at what it looks like after we do our color correcting, we can see that you can see the colors a lot nicer. You It pulls out the blues a lot nicer, um, it just looks much cleaner to begin with. Um, so, you know, this is the original footage, and then this is the footage after we add a color bounce. Now, what we did with the color bounce, uh, let me see if I can bring it up over here. Downside to having a giant monitor is that your video doesn't always pick up the giant monitor. Um, so let's take a look here. There we go. So now you can see our color balance settings here on this on the video um, you can still see the video footage here again if we turn off the color balance you get that really yellow nasty yellow footage if we turn it back on it's nice and cleaned up um, so what we did here was because it had such a bright yellow vibrant color we dropped the red balance shadowing um, by about 50 pretty close to 50 um, which helps lessen kind of the orange yellow reddish color that we get in the background we didn't do anything with the green shadow balance at all. Um, we just left it. There wasn't really a reason to do anything. Um, and then the reason why we did stuff with the blue color balance is because if you notice, blue is kind of the primary color here. If we go back to uh, enabling the color balance, this is actually pretty close to what it looks like if you were there in real life. You have the blue color dress, the blue color suits with the blue ties. Um, so this is the main reason why we upped the blue balance shadow balance by 73 so that way the colors of the wedding would really stand out and as you can tell those same colors stand out with the audience with the blue suit blue tie the blue dress over here the blue shirt here um, you know so the blue was definitely an important color for the wedding so we wanted that to stand out in the video which is how I chose how to adjust the color balance um, we did the same thing with our mid-tone colors with the mid-tones um, because red wasn't a primary color for the wedding party, I didn't really need to adjust anything with that. Um, with the greens, I brought those down a little bit so that way stuff wouldn't, um, you know, kind of pop out as much. Um, with the blue balance, we upped that again because we wanted to draw more attention to the blue colors. Um, then again, for the highlighted colors, for the highlight red, we brought that down. And we were able to leave the green and the blue pretty much where it was which is what gave us from this yellowish, orn yellow orange, nasty looking color to more of a realistic color. You know, this is what it more or less looked like in the actual ceremony itself. Now, if we jump ahead to another piece of footage here, um, you'll see on this one, this is what it looks like afterwards. So this is the after, and this is the before. You can see everything's kind of dark. The shadowing is really dark. Um, so we wanted to add more light, more vibrance to it, which would help cut out some of the graininess look that we have here. So what I did with the color balance is I upped the red balance 
on the footage so that way it would bring, pull more of the yellows pour more of the light out of um, the footage itself brighten it, brightening up the image and then we also did that with the green because green is technically a uh, brighter more vibrant color blue i just very barely uh, knocked down the blue shadows just a little bit to bring balance some and then again with the rest of the settings here um, i upped the red i upped the green i have the blue um, basically the problem was is that there was too much shadowing and not enough direct image from this footage at all um, so we really dropped down the shadows or enhanced the shadows and then enhanced the primary colors in the footage in order to get this brighter appearance um, so you know again before kind of darker I mean not awful um, you just kind of notice up in this area here it's definitely a lot darker I wanted it to, I wanted the whole clip to stand out a little bit more which is why we made these adjustments and to be honest um, I could even go back and do some minor adjustments to maybe maybe not make it as bright and vibrant as it is and uh, so the thing is between these two uh, footage and then here here's our third set of footage um, not here but here is our third piece of footage again with this footage um, it was a little bit yellow before this is the after so if we look at the before um, it had more of that yellow color tinge to it again I wanted to lessen that yellow make the blue a little bit more vibrant and so we did again made appropriate adjustments lowering the red balance bringing up the green and the blue um, in order to make the blue stand out more now one thing to keep in mind is that you're not going to be able to do just the basic copy and paste across all of the footage um, I mean to some extent I was able to but the thing is is that each one of these pieces of footage are from a different camera so um, if we look at this one here this was from our DSLR camera it records at 720 at 60 frames per second um, is its max recording capability and so that's one camera and this is the camera that was picking up the most amount of those yellow tones and it was really bringing in that yellow tinge to all the video um, our second piece of footage came from our Canon or actually this came from a cell phone this piece of footage here came from a Samsung J7 smartphone um, it came from the rear facing camera we were able to use it as kind of an all-around grabbing the back the whole uh, scene video um, uh, the reason why I have this type of footage is I like to have something to fall back onto in case of failure with a camera, which we actually did have and happen with our DSLR camera. Um, some of the footage, actually a lot of the footage we were not able to use because the stabilizer did not work. Um, and so it's very shaky footage and to stabilize it in post-production while possible, um, it just didn't come out quite as clean as I was hoping it would. So we had this footage to be able to fall back onto as kind of a, hey, we missed something, but we didn't miss all of it. We're able to kind of catch an overall look of where things are going. And then we had our Canon Vixia camera, which you can find is this footage here. Um, this camera guy was moving around quite a bit, so he got a lot of different angles, a lot of different color tones. Um, this particular f footage here, um, this, this is the after this is cleaned up before it was really dark and even more grainy than it was in this um, so we were able to again pull out some of that brightness pull out some of the uh, focus on the clips itself so overall uh, that's what we did with this video one of the reasons why i wanted to highlight on this is that um, a lot of people think that in order to short shoot a video with multiple cameras you have to have the exact same camera multiple times this isn't at all the case. Um, it requires a lot more post-production work if you don't have the same camera. Another issue that we had in this particular room is that the lighting is not balanced in the sanctuary hall at all. Um, it's very much all over the place. Uh, the light bulbs, honestly, are not camera friendly. Yeah, as you can see in a lot of the footage, it grabs that footage and it just makes it really bright when you're focused on the light bulbs. Like if you take a look here, you can see that it is just grabbing those lights and it's really amplifying it. Um, and if we remove the color, it still does that even without the color balance. Makes it a little bit brighter with the color balance, but it helps brighten up the room in the long run. Um, another thing to think about is when you're filming in a darker room, you're gonna end up with grainy footage. One of the things you can do is looking at cleaning up a lot of that grainy footage. 
Honestly, the best way to do it is to make sure you have appropriate lighting. You're not always going to have the most appropriate lighting in every situation, but it does not hurt um, you know, to be able to do a color balance or even a color correction or even do post-production lighting adjustment, which we may do a video of in the future in order to help remove some of that graininess by increasing the amount of light. Honestly, though, the best way you're going to avoid graininess in your footage is to have good lighting to begin with. So I hope this video really helps you guys out. Um, or if you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to post them.